welcome back to my channel! <laughs> um, in my last video, it's been a little while, which I apologize for, but I've been really super busy. <laughs> Kids going back to school, had lots of stuff to do. Um, so here I am taking this opportunity to, you know, create some new uh, content for you lovely people to watch. Um, in my last video, I said that I was going to go over my um, altars and uh, explain to them, or explain to you, uh, more about them and um, the things on them and the purposes and whatnot. Um, but um, I thought about that for a little while, and uh, there are a lot of videos out there. Um, with people who discuss their altars, and they can uh, r really do a good job at it, I think better than I could, um, and just the abundance of them should be able to help you decide, you know, what to do with yours. Um, you received little tours of my altars, and, um, you know, you know what they look like. Uh, then might my, my change like right now they're in the middle of being changed around a little bit because of the changing of the seasons fall is upon us Yay! <laughs> um, and so my altars are gonna change a little bit so right now probably isn't the best time you know I mean if I got some feedback and you know people asked me to do videos like that you know maybe I would but I think there are plenty of videos out there where you can uh, learn the basics of an altar and see how they're generally set up and what people do with them and their purposes and all that stuff. So I'm going to skip that for now. Um, however, I have been really, really pushed to discuss um, the veil. <laughs> Uh, the, a lot of people don't really understand the veil and the spirit world and, um, why you have to do certain things, um, in, uh, ritualistic spell work that, um, are really quite necessary and, um, that you can't see. Um, if you are an empath or an energy worker, you know, you can feel and, um, ex like, sensually experience the things that you can't see, um, but for those who can't, you know, they have a, they, I'm not gonna say they all have, but, you know, some have a harder time understanding the purpose of what is being done. So, while I am not an expert on the veil and I am not a high priestess or have, you know, been in the practice for a majority of my life or anything like that, I would like to give you my thoughts on it just to give you a better understanding of uh, what it is and how it works and um, how the steps performed in spellcasting uh, work to make your uh, spells materialize. Okay, so um, in witchcraft, um, I'm going to say the majority of witches, maybe not all, but um, definitely the majority of witches believe in uh, our physical world, which is the world where I am, it's where you are, it's the world where you can hold things and touch things and see things and, you know, your senses, they experience it. Um, and then there's the spirit world where that lives the unseen. Um, it's where your mind resides and um, your, your brain is, sits in the physical realm, but your mind and your spirit are connected to the spirit realm. The veil is like an energetic barrier between the two. 
Um, it kind of, I like to think of it like a, a grilled cheese sandwich. <laughs> you know, you have the physical world and you have the cheesy barrier <laughs> of the veil and then you have the spirit world being physical and the spirit being the two layers of bread that are stuck together um, while being the same thing, you know. Um, in, uh, wait, let me go back. Okay, so the veil is like an energetic barrier and um, witches tend to believe that during certain times of the year, the veil is thinner um, and then during some times of the year, it's thicker. And the veil being, it, the veil's thickness um, depends on how well your spell casting is going to work and how much you're going to uh, be able to interact with the spirits and beings of the spirit world. Um, my personal thoughts on the veil is its strength is totally dependent on the power of the sun because um, during the strongest parts of the year where the, the sun is out for most of the day, it's beating down on the planet, you know, it's hot, it um, is in really energetic and it's just invigorating everything. Um, that seems to be coincide with the time where the veil is the thickest. Um, whether that's scientifically, like the amount of the length of the day and the amount of like the UV rays or, you know, whatever it is, because it seems, does also seem that like once the sun goes down, you have a better chance of um, speaking to spirits and whatnot. And a lot of magics are performed at night under the, the light of the moon. So um, that kind of goes hand in hand as well. Um, and during the part of the year, during fall and winter and the beginning of spring, whenever the sun is shrinking below the horizon at a rapid rate and uh, the days are getting shorter and things are starting to cool down and die off and um, rest for the new year, you know, that's when the veil seems to be the thinnest. Um, so, I tend to believe it's, um, it's directly correlated with the power of the sun and what time of year it is. Okay, so, that being said, um, a lot of uh, witches will um, perform their most spiritual work like um, speaking with spirits and uh, spiritual meditations and whatnot um, around Halloween during, after the fall equinox and um, during the winter, during the cooler times when uh, like if you're following the wheel of the year, you know, there's not a whole lot of growth during the winter, so you want to um, use the winter as more of a time for internal workings, cleansings, banishings, you know, stuff like that. Stuff to prepare you to perform growth, spell work, and uh, work in general in the spring and the summer when things are abundant and growing, you know. You, you, once you work with the cycles of nature, it all really is easier to understand and kind of goes hand in hand. So we have the veil and it separates the physical world and the spirit world. And when you do um, workings, uh, you like generally the proper way, you know, not everyone does it this way. Sometimes I don't even do it this way, which I really should, but you know, it comes with understanding and experience. So the first thing you want to do is, um, you want to cast a circle. Okay, so when you're casting your circle, it's a circle of protection. 
circle of energy that your mind is creating. Yes, you cannot see it. Uh, some people, you know, will actually use like a barrier of salt or something and, or something else to help them visualize that circle that is being present. But it's not really necessary as long as your uh, imagination is um, powerful enough to produce it in your mind because your mind is in the spirit world. Um, and so even though you cannot see the circle of protection, you know, you are um, producing it in the spirit world where you may not see it, but the spirits that are in your that are in the other realm that you know that that are present of the situation um your mind is producing it there it is it's an energy it's a thought form it's present to them and that is where it is offering you protection which is where you need it the most um yes it is you know good to have protection in your physical realm too but uh, it's easier to protect yourself from what you can't see than uh, not knowing what you can't see. And so that is really the um, uh, purpose of casting a circle. Um, whenever you are doing spell work or just just like making a wish, you know, you... Um, you you can't see you you may say speak your wish but you can't see it working and if you've ever had a wish come true or um a dream come true or uh just if you've ever really wanted something or thought of something and then it came to be in the physical world you know it's like how does that happen well that happens through the spirit world where you cannot see you know, just because you can't see it does not mean it's not being performed in, a, in the other realm. Um, I guess that doesn't, a lot of this is not going to do with the veil, even though I've discussed the veil. So really it's just like a speech on uh, the different realms and the veil and how it all combines. <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyways, so... Um, so you cast your circle and you um, you call in your elements and you can have physical representation of those elements in your physical world where you, uh, again, it just helps your mind to um, better like anchor the visualization of what you're doing, but it's not necessary. Um, if you are energetically tuned, then you can feel those elements come in. You know, you don't need a physical representation, but you can feel it come in. Just like you can feel your circle being made. And while other people that outside of your circle may not see a circle, you know, it's there and you know it's there. You created the boundary, you know it's there. So it's tougher for them when they're not in the same moment but with witches especially those in covens you know they everyone knows what is going on um so same thing when you call in your elements and uh when you're doing your spell work you know you are creating a another house so to say in the spirit realm um you are putting your wishes out there you are putting your energy out there into the, the unseen realm where your uh, goals and dreams and desires and everything is going to make all of its little connections and create the manifestation in the physical world. Um, so, um, it it's easier um to for me at least i don't know lots of lots of witches do things differently but it's easier for me to do my spell work in association with um uh the proper season because of the thickness of the veil at those times 
Um, so, say spring, okay? So, in the spring, I want to um, grow uh, something for the next year. Say, not that, you know, I need love. I have a wonderful marriage and I love my husband. But say I'm, I'm single and I'm looking for love. Um, so, during the spring, I would... Um, as like right before spring, the spring equinox and, you know, kind of after the winter solstice and the spring equinox is when I would do intention spells to put out there what I want to, uh, grow. So I want to, um, grow the opportunity to have, to find the person of my dreams and, um, have them come into my life okay so that's when I would do that work and then um, as the spring you know goes on I would um, continue with I would just um, constantly uh, put forth like that energy like you you have to feed it you can't um, like a lot of uh, like actually I was taught to like do spell work and forget it but I find that the best results for spell work is when it's reinforced and so if I'm trying to grow love for the year during the spring and the summer especially during the um, the, the Beltane yes Beltane is a great time to really reinforce that um, spell work for love that you want, you know, or money. Say you're trying to grow money, you know, create on your altar space, create a uh, permanent altar where you can constantly feed that spell work and um, you can constantly put off that energy uh, in the spirit realm that you're trying to attract and grow your financial, uh, your bank account or something, you know. Um, so, it, um, once you've like done that through the spring, you know, the veil is growing. Um, so, it's getting thicker and thicker and it's um, kind of, uh, it's not as easy to accomplish things. Um, it, it's kind of, oh God, how do I say this? It's like, it's kind of like creating a barrier, you know, and... Um, like you may be feeding your altar or feeding your spell work or whatnot, but um, it's it's a time to let it grow. Like there's uh, like saplings. Saplings require a lot of ten tending to. They they need help to grow. You know, you water them, you uh, make sure they're spaced apart properly. You know, but then once they reach a certain height. You let them grow. You let them do their thing. You let them blossom. You let them grow. And so during the summertime, when the veil is the thickest, you want to uh, tend to it simply, you know, and just kind of um, have faith, really, that your uh, you're manif you're manifesting that your work is out there your intentions are out there and um you just want to kind of uh kind of relax um they're like when you're beekeeping okay um the two best times for bees to produce honey is during the spring and the fall because that's when there are two different flowering seasons um, during the middle of the summer is what uh, a lot of bees encounter it's called a dearth that's when um, it's too hot and a lot of the plants have stopped flowering they've seeded already you know while they're, well, they're producing their seeds and um, there there's just not flowers there, there aren't as many flowers as there were in the spring and so the honeybees have to live off of what they produced, what honey they produced in the spring, 
until the fall comes when the fall flowers start to bloom. And so the same thing is like with spell work. It's like even the honeybees, um, who are also uh, known for being messengers to the gods, so they're, they kind of have a spiritual attunement there too. Um, so it's, it's almost like they know that the veil is thick as thin, you know? It's not a time for growth, or not growth, but like creating, you know? It's a time for rest and uh, kind of just building up what you have. Um, and then the fall comes around whenever the veil starts to get thinner and the sun starts to dip below the horizon again. And then we approach harvest season. And um, whenever uh, harvest season comes around, it is uh, very important to give thanks. Uh, Thanksgiving, you know, um, stuff like that. That's, that's why Thanksgiving is there. Uh, Maybon, Lunasa, you know, those, um, those, uh, feast and, f um, harvest festivals are meant to attune you with that, like, uh, you know, you, you should, harvest season is coming, so the veil is thinning, so you're, the energy that was, um, creating in the spirit realm, all of your intentions that were creating there, are now uh, able to start manifesting because the veil has thinned and so it's easier for that to make its connections and that is generally when I start to see results from my spell work and so it like it's like a six month thing <laughs> it's funny I have really noticed that if I put something out there it generally takes about six months for me to get results from it um, very rarely do I see instant results, but if I do, it's usually during the late fall, winter, early spring, whenever the veil is the thinnest. Um, so yeah, so fall harvest, you want to give thanks. Um, not just to, um, the people around you, but you want to give thanks to the earth, because the earth is manifest. The spirit realm may be uh, doing a lot of work, but you can't produce something that you can touch without the earth. The earth is, the, the stars may provide the dust, but the earth provides the creation. So you want to give your thanks. The more thanks you give, the more abundant your life is going to be. It's a gratitude thing, you know? There's lots of things out there that tell you, hey, if you give gratitude, then you're going to receive good things. And it's the truth. It's, it's, you don't even have to be a witch to, you know, realize that's the truth. When you give thanks, you receive good things. When you give, you receive, you know, it's, it's the a natural mm, karmic cycle, kind of. Um, so yeah, so when, when the veil is starting to thin, you start to receive, and that is the harvest. You're starting to harvest the manifestations of the spell work that you did. And then once harvest season is over, you have the cool down period. That's when you have received your blessings, you have received your spell work. Um, during the cool down period, you know, you it's easier to talk. It's easier to talk to uh, all those spirits that, um, helped you to manifest, you know, it's like you're, you're talking to your friends, like, hey guys, um, you know, I really need this in my life, this is exactly what I want, can you help me get that? And during the summer, they're running around, running around the spirit realm, trying to, trying to collect all the things to make what you wanted happen, and poof, they made it happen, so you give thanks. You give thanks to them, you give thanks to the earth, you give thanks to the people in your life, 
and that shows gratitude. It builds relationships. It builds relationships with your physical realm, and it builds relationships with your spiritual realm. Um, so, so after your cool down period, you know, there's uh, there's not a lot of growth during the winter. There just isn't. Everything is covered in snow. Everything is calm, cold, quiet. And so, the best thing to do is to do things associated with the cold, calm, and quiet. You want to start off the new year with new things to manifest. But say you have like uh, a problem, you know, that you think, um, say you want to manifest a new love for the new year, but you tend to be kind of a jealous person and that causes problems in your past relationships. So during the winter period, you want to do spirit work, not just with other spirits, but with your own spirit. You want to um, cleanse, you want to banish. Um, if you, uh, you, like not only sh should you cleanse your physical house, but you need to cleanse your mental house, you know? Like, you've created, if, if you're a jealous person and is causing bad relationships, like, like that's, that's a spiritual thing, you know? Yes, it's causing problems in your physical realm because you have no one to be with, but all of those emotions are residing in your spirit realm. It's residing up here. So you want to banish that. You want to you cleanse it out. You want to look deep inside your soul and you want to clean house so that when spring comes around and you want to manifest a new love, not only is your physical ready, but your spirit is too. You're ready to overcome those things that were in your past and create a new start for your future. <clears throat> And that's easier to do in the middle of winter when the veil is thin because you have more of a connection. So I think I've gone through all the seasons and the reasons and the whys and whatnot. Um, I hope I have explained it enough to make you understand it a little bit better. Um, again, just... Uh, to rehash on it, you know, uh, whatever you do in your spell work that you can't see, just because you can't see it doesn't mean it's not happening up there. It's happening up there. I, it can be hard to um, uh, not be skeptical, you know, when, when you can't see and touch something, but you have to have faith that whatever you're producing mentally is happening in your second house not your physical house but your spiritual house it's happening there and it's going to produce you results and you're going to see those results it's easier for me to follow the wheel of the year and do those things in cycle just because of the veil you know the the seasons have their reasons <laughs> And, um, like, if you study it enough, that, to me it all makes sense. It all goes together so well, and, uh, you know, it's like, it's been tradition, and it's, it's not tradition for some phony matter, it's tradition because it works. It, it helps you connect with the cycles of life and the planet, and it also helps you to better yourself and your spirit realm, you know, in body and soul. It, it melds together and it works super wonderfully and magically. And so, yeah, I hope I have explained that, but good for you. Uh, if you have any other questions, you know, you can um, drop me a line and I can try to explain it further or I can make another video bringing up all of your questions and whatnot. So 
thank you for joining me again today. I hope you enjoyed this discussion and I will see you later.